My name is Megan Fitzjames, and I'm showing to YouTube a video clip that was taken by an eyewitness of an event, which I believe is important for the world to find out about. The following clip is about an incident that took place at the uh, main Eagle Festival in Western Mongolia this year. The date of the event was October 1st, 2017. The time of the event was in the afternoon. I have two eyewitness reports and their quotes that I'd like to share. One of the eyewitnesses is the same person that shared this uh, video clip to me. I am not going to give any identifying information and will have to scrub the voice of the person uh, who has provided this video clip to me anonymously. Uh, aside from two witness, eyewitness reports uh, and quotes that I will provide, I also have two grapevine reports from two separate individuals who were not uh, eyewitnesses um, and present during this incident. However, do have um, extra information uh, that they've uh, gathered through different sources um, and through uh, their understanding um, because they're in the area. I am uh, going to start with the eyewitness report um, by indicating that this uh, report is made by me. I'm not a reporter or a journalist. I do, however, believe that this is a newsworthy story. So, uh, the, as I said, this uh, clip that was submitted to me will be shown in a moment. And I'm, uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, read out to you the quote from the person that wants to share uh, this information uh, to the world. And I'll be reading that person's words now. Quote, I was recently at the Ogi Eagle Festival, the main one in Mongolia, and the foreign tourists were giving Aishopan of the Eagle Hunters film an almost godlike status. The whole Eagle Festival was a bun fight. It took me back to my days as, in brackets, scrubbed the identifying information, uh, trying to elbow my way through the 500 millimeter lenses to get a space to take a shot. Internal flights from UB were triple what they usually are, and there was no accommodation to be found in Olgi. But this was what, uh, among more honorable pursuits, such as giving new life to the centuries-old tradition of eagle hunting, the Eagle Festival's founder wanted when he held the first Eagle Festival 18 years ago. There were several uh, so-called eagle huntresses at the festival this year, no doubt all hoping that they too would fall into the hands of someone like Otto Bell, the director of the Eagle Huntress, and be taken off to foreign lands and offered free entry into Oxford and Harvard. The film falls into the category of marketing propaganda. The issue at the festival was that the hunter who got the prize didn't win the prize, but they gave it to him anyway. It was all political. There was a prize for best dressed rider given to a pretty Australian girl wearing a traditional coat and blue jeans, leaving all the Mongolian women competitors out of the race. Things were pretty nervy anyway, as earlier on a policeman had tasered a horse to the ground. Then when people were getting upset with the policeman over the horse, they tasered a guy who dropped to the ground, was given mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation and taken off in an ambulance. Everyone was on their toes after that incident. It happened in the middle of the Kokpar event, which I think was supposed to be the last event of the day. Everything came to a stop. The incident happened at 1.45. I had my camera set to another time zone, but it must have been about 4.45 p.m. out there. And I was still filming at 3.18, uh, one and a half hours later. There was a really long wait after the incident, and a lot of people went home. It was really cold, and it looked like nothing was going to happen. They did get the event finally going again. The prize was given at and the equivalent of 3.18 p.m., and that was when a whole bunch of disgruntled eagle hunters rushed the prize giving and all hell broke loose with police dogs, policemen, and general mayhem. That was the end of everything." End quote. The second eyewitness report by someone who indicated that they were there from start to finish is as follows. This person also wishes complete anonymity. Quote, there were some problems with the organizers. On or during the tug of war uh, on horseback, a coke par game, the judges wanted only the players in the center. So police warned the people to leave the players only, but the people didn't get out of the center. And silly police electroshocked one horse. The horse fell down on its rider. 
ambulance guy came and the guy was unconscious and everybody was against police because of what happened and the other reason the hunters were unhappy was that they got half of what they were told they would get from the organizers and they were angry and I don't know who the electroshocked guy was there aren't any reports on this on the news of course as always judges may have played on or with the results of the eagle hunting hunters and at the end almost all of the eagle hunters were drunk and they had been paid only half of what the eagle hunters association had promised that made all the eagle hunters aggressive and they were already drunk and because of the police electroshock the horse they had to cancel the game we want uh, we want to avoid that happening again and then I scrubbed the identifying information end quote as you will uh, have noticed that there are slight differences in the two eyewitness reports uh, the, the eyewitness who took this film the footage that you're going to be seeing uh, indicated uh, that um, the the person was the, the the horseback rider was tasered um, or he's just referred to as a guy and then also uh, that person noticed that the coke par event did carry on and happen the second eyewitness uh, indicated that the uh, the uh, the guy who was unconscious was actually um, unconscious because he fell down from uh, and fell under the horse. Um, he also noted the the he was also noted to have um, been unconscious. Um, however, that um, eyewitness indicated that they had to cancel the Kupa game. I'm going to be um, including two further reports uh, to give further context to um, this the, the film footage that you're about to see. The first report is from someone who was also not an eyewitness, who was not an eyewitness, um, who said the following: "I heard that the guy was tasered." I know that he was fine after the medical people helped him. It's true that some guys were arrested at the festival site and brought to the police station. I learned that they were released after a few hours and were given a fine the next day. I don't know the amount of the fine." End quote. The second uh, grapevine report from someone who also was not there uh, provides some further context. Quote, I wasn't there when the fighting and the tasering event happened. What I heard was that there was a dispute between some established traditional eagle hunters and the official who is the head of the Eagle Hunters Association for the main festival. The traditional hunters were disputing the way the festival was being run and they felt that they were not being given due credit as real eagle hunters as opposed to showman hunters. Also, there was some dispute over male eagles being used as they are smaller and faster and therefore better at competitions. Apparently, one of the real eagle, uh, hunting eagles swoop, swooped down during the contest and killed one of the falcons. Uh, so it seems uh, that an increasing number of eagles participating are just um, taken and trained, uh, taken from the nest and trained for the festival itself, rather than real eagle hunting eagles, which is another thing that traditional hunters were angry about. I think probably another dispute is the not prize money going to those showmen eagle hunters who the traditional eagle hunter guys don't think deserve to be winning. Um, end quote. Um, just to add a little bit further uh, information for anybody who wishes to look into this, the, uh, there is readily findable evidence based writings that serve to bolster the viability of the observation of that person. So the, an example article is Eagle Festival. Um, highlights Kazakh culture in Mongolia which is an article dated 2010 and there are two research articles one is entitled Altai Kazakh Falconry as Heritage Tourism the, Eagle, the Golden Eagle Festivals of Western Mongolia uh, by Takuya Soma and Batuba Suki dated 2014 and When the Hunt is Over Culture and Conservation in Kazakh Eagle Falconry by Nolan Ebner dated 2016 Please note, I will be putting all of the quotes of these two eyewitnesses and two grapevine uh, reporters um, in writing and into the description section of this video. 
Now here's the clip, uh, and please watch. I, I will be uh, lowering the sound on any identifying of voices that are heard within the, the video itself. Here we go. So this is the slow-mo of the uh, clip that you just watched at full speed. Um, I've taken off the sound so that it can just be shown visually. Uh, you'll notice behind the man in the long uh, maroon-colored uh, coat, 
there is um, something on the ground and behind him and be behind about five police officers. Uh, you can see them, they're wearing uh, black coats and they span the, the length of this crowd. So on the ground uh, is where the horse is, uh, the horse that was tasered. The actual tasering moments, uh, the moment that the horse was tasered was not captured on film. However, all witnesses um, verify that it, the, the horse was unconscious and on the ground uh, due to the tasering of the animal. My understanding is that the horse's orientation is so that it is uh, the rear end of the horse is on the left, uh, the right hand side, near the mid center of the picture. I'm not sure if people can see that very clearly. The horse appears to be in a lighter colored animal. You can see some of the younger people uh, behind the policemen are more um, actively upset and, and confronting uh, the policemen that were, were, uh, over the horse. Other people are s uh, sitting on their horses and watching um, quietly. The, the eagle hunters that are present there are, are, do not have their eagles with them at that time. And they're just watching quietly and calmly what is going on. There's some jostling uh, between the police officers and some of the more upset, what looks like younger gentlemen that are near the horse. You'll notice now uh, the man is being taken off to the left side of the screen there. In a moment, you'll see that that person is unconscious and is uh, going to be laid down on the ground and be receiving mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation from one of the people at the festival there. The camera isn't moving over to that yet, and it's just moving over now. Now you'll see on the ground that that's where the unconscious gentleman is. He's receiving mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation from the man who has a gray-colored jacket on. the person is continuing to try to give mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to the unconscious man. The person who shot this video did not uh, witness the moment when the horse was actually uh, brought uh, out of its unconscious state or, or became conscious again. Uh, the person wasn't able to substantiate that the horse did come out of consciousness or back into consciousness. If you watch closely, in the back corner on the left-hand side, there is a gentleman wearing a blue tooth. He looks like a tourist. There are several other tourists mulling about. You'll see them in different parts of this video clip. There are two of them that are running towards the fray right now. They're wearing backpacks. One is the yellow with the yellow tooth going off to the right, and then one with the black tooth going into, uh, into the left, into the crowd. Now you see a bunch of people that are living, there's a stretcher in one of the person's hands. I'm not sure where that's going, but the, all the people in this part of the clip are running not away from something, but rather towards the stage where the, um, the eagle hunters have also uh, been riding their horses towards the stage. And you'll see this animal here, the dun-colored horse. Uh, the person that took this video clip believes that that was uh, probably the horse that would, uh, was the tasered horse and because it has no rider and is being taken away. So the people are moving towards the stage in a rush. They, they're apparently and reportedly still very upset about what happened with the horse. Um, and uh, 
so there was a lot of, of activity going on. You'll notice also the tourist spectators, this woman in the gray with the um, burgundy uh, scarf, for example. There's some of the tourists were, um, it seemed to be just spectating from a distance. Here's the unconscious person again, the, that same man that was shown earlier. He's brought a little bit away a little bit further. And then comes the ambulance with the, uh, with medical assistance. So they're just lifting the man into the ambulance at this point. It looks like he may be conscious, uh, given that his head isn't flopping around and as though he were unconscious. So he's put into the ambulance, but he evidently didn't have any um, motion in the rest of his body when he's lifted into the ambulance. They're then we're, we're getting two people, two or three people enter into the ambulance. And here's, uh, for example, this woman in the uh, cream color coat with the blue bag there. She was obviously uh, a tourist. Some of the locals do wear Western clothing, so it is a little bit difficult to distinguish which are locals and which are tourists. However, um, I'm assuming that the people with telephoto lenses and backpacks are more identifiable as tourists. And so uh, the, the ambulance was leaving, and that is the end of this uh, video clip. Up until this point in this YouTube video, I have presented information shared to me on the promise of strict confidentiality, which of course I, res I respect. I also wanted to try to see uh, what was written and findable on the internet, so I did some searching around and was able to find two blog posts written in the English language. Please note that I didn't try to search for other blog posts in other languages, and I'm not sure if they exist or not. Uh, just so that people know, my search was not extensive to try to find blog posts by other people. I, uh, the first blog story quote that I'm going to be quoting is by a woman named Linda Dillenbeck who wrote a blog called The Golden Eagle Festival, Western Mongolia. Quote, Unfortunately, during this, in brackets, Kokpar event, there was an incident amongst the competitors. I'm not sure of the details, as it all happened quite quickly, and every report I heard afterwards differed. Either way, there was drunk people, a dispute, and the refereeing of the Kokpar competition, a horse that fell, a policeman with a taser, people punching each other, and a man was dragged from the brawl unconscious with blood all over his face and someone started to perform CPR on him. Other than the odd one-on-one -on -one punch up between teenage boys at school, I had never witnessed something like this and it wasn't very nice. It escalated to the point where stones were being thrown and that was my cue to leave and sit and wait on the bus. I did hear from many sources that the unconscious man was okay and that they eventually finished the competition. However, it was a real shame that this had to happen at the end of what was a really great event." End quote. The second blog story is from a woman named Lisa Vandersveep, who wrote, quote, The day was just coming to an end when a huge fight broke out. The situation was chaotic but we saw a horse fall and an, un and an unconscious man pulled from the crowd. Ten minutes later, the eagle hunters turned their attention towards a policeman, chasing him and throwing rocks. The policeman had to flee for cover inside a car. We didn't really understand what was happening, but apparently an eagle hunter had been tasered by a policeman, which dampened the festive atmosphere somewhat. 
We were even afraid that the festival would end. But these Mongolian warriors-slash-hunters aren't fazed by an occasional tasering, and the tug-of-war soon resumed. For them, there was nothing on the hand. Please note that this woman is uh, using an expression which translates to the equivalent of there is no problem at all. At the end of the day, it was time for the judges to award the prizes. We were watching this closing ceremony from afar as a second fight broke out. Of course, the contestants did not agree with all the results, and we suspect that the fights are also part of the tradition, end quote. Please note that these two women who wrote their blog posts were alerted that I would use their quotes on in this YouTube video, but I did not receive and or wait for their response as, as, as to what they felt about that. Therefore, please, I ask that you kindly not flood them with contact. And uh, if you were to contact them, please point them to this video so that they know that they're Witnessing statements were only used to uh, illustrate different points of view. I'd also like to comment that in terms of the perception that this event was in any way a part of the tradition, that is categorically not the case uh, from my understanding from multiple sources, local and foreign, who are more aware of the uh, tradition. Also, the idea that the uh, hunters were not phased by the uh, event. Uh, that is, of course, um, something that bears further investigation. Um, from my understanding, some people are very, very upset about this incident. I'd also like to note that this, the violence that did happen at this festival is considered highly unusual and highly unprecedented in terms of an incident. In the course of my research, I secured the first name of the six judges at the Eagle Festival, and I'll share them with you in writing as well because I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing their names correctly. They are Alpes Bai, Huat, Shinai, Huangan, Kenshalik, and Kizil Bai. As is typical in the region, many people are readily findable and identifiable by first name and role without the need to also find their last names. I also found out the name of the young eagle hunter who reportedly started the so-called second fight at the Eagle Festival, which occurred uh, reportedly after the award ceremony. I was told that the young man was reacting in anger over how the awards were allotted and that his eagle performed very well at the festival. This was in the opinion of an eagle hunter whose identity will be withheld here. And I will also withhold the young man's name out of respect for his privacy and also because I have not gathered his own subjective point of view to say anything further with confidence. In order to attempt some balance in reporting, I tried to find out what the festival organizers were thinking and promoting in terms of what happened at the festival. And as a starting point, I first found out about the man who founded the nonprofit Golden Eagle Hunters Association, in brackets the Bearcats Association, and the Eagle Festival itself. His name is Jalsa Urubshuro, and his name spelled J A L S A, last name spelled U R U B S H U R O W. He is reportedly a Mongolian American entrepreneur, and he's the president and CEO of Nomadic Expeditions which is based in Hansburg, New Jersey, and is intimately connected with the festival as, it, as its main tour operator um, with the festival. Reportedly, after 1990, the first democratically elected prime minister personally recruited Mr. Urubshiro to advise the government on expanding accessibility to Mongolia to Western travelers. This led to the creation of nomadic expedition, expeditions, which operates not only in Mongolia, but also in Tibet, Bhutan, Siberia, and China. Nomadic Expeditions has received praise by the Mongolian Tourism Association as the country's best tour operator. Mr. Urobshiro is has run businesses in Mongolia and the United States over the last two decades, and is also the co-founder of the North American Mongolia Business Council and spent uh, reportedly a significant amount of time as chairman with an interest in Mongolia's de democratization, democratization rather, and economic reforms that would establish a free market. 
His business savvy coupled with his extensive exper exper expertise on Mongolia has earned him two mentions by Condé Nast Traveler magazine as the world's top travel specialist for Mongolia and his awards have included a responsible tourism honoree award by the Educational Travel Consortium. In a YouTube video entitled Promoting Tourism to, Con to Conserve Mongolian Wild, uh, in brackets, I am Echo Warrior. Uh, Mr. Jalsa uh, Urub Shirov noted the following, quote, I tell people we are a conservation organization disguised as a tour operator, end quote. I decided to look at the Facebook page for nomadic expeditions to see what was said about this incident at the Eagle Festival. While I found Aishopan Nurgaev of the Eagle Huntress uh, documentary to be clearly celebrated in connection with Eagle festival and that's yearly since her reported win at the festival in 2014 as captured in in the film itself by Otto Bell there was not one Facebook post that mentioned anything about this horse and man tasering incident or about the disputes over payment and fairness to the eagle hunters be they real or showman types or about the award determinations or about the drunkenness amongst some attendees, or about the counter attacks on policemen over the tasering incident, or about the related fighting and mayhem that with police dogs present and so on. Instead, all I found was photos and captions that suggested nothing untoward happened whatsoever. I also noticed that the governor of the Bayan Ulgi province, a man by the name of A. Uh, Gilim Khan, spelled G I L I M, K-H-A-N, was at the festival award ceremony that took place before the second fight broke out. I found a photo on the webs on the fa Facebook page for Nomadic Expeditions um, and I also researched to see if I could find a photo of the governor to see if that was indeed the person standing beside uh, Jalsa Urub Sharov. And indeed the photograph did match up and the two of them are shown standing beside the winner of the festival who's on horseback holding his trophy aloft while they smile for the camera. I personally find this silence on what happened a concerning uh, issue in terms of nothing, you know, the fact that there was no indication that this incident had happened at all by nomadic expeditions. Um, as a closing statement, I'd like uh, viewers to understand that this story has never been reported in Mongolian news in any sh way, shape, or form. Nor has this uh, incident uh, been reported in any news form whatsoever. This event took place over a month ago now. I believe that the, uh, the story here needs to be investigated further. Uh, on for multiple reasons, not the not the least of which is that this story wasn't reported where I believe it is newsworthy. There it is evident that there are several people who are uh, witness to this event that were upset by this event. It is also evident that um, this should have been a news story um, within the country of Mongolia. Um, perhaps um, my assumption is that this would be a newsworthy story. I live in Canada. It certainly would be a news story in Canada. Uh, given this uh, Eagle Festival is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Cultural Event, um, given that the Eagle Hunters apparently are um, having some conflict with, uh, reportedly having some conflict in how they've been treated and or compensated and or how the festival is being judged uh, also uh, appears to be something that bears looking into. And uh, of course the issue of uh, the tasering of the horse um, as some sort of method of um, addressing what is what was a human uh, caused um, interaction. It seems that also that might be something of interest and or should be followed up with as well. Uh, who will follow up on this story? I don't know. What I do know is that I, f I feel that I've completed my mission in fulfilling this task of publishing um, this to the internet for the world to see.
Again, my name is Megan Fitzjames. Again, please look in the details uh, section. If you leave a comment, I won't be responding to the comment. Um, I will, however, respond to any bona fide news reporter from a bona fide news organization who wishes contact with me. Any uh, reporter of that description is welcome to leave their contact information um, in the comment section of this video. Thank you for your time.